Hey there, you're watching Jay's Two Cents. You may remember me from such videos as iPhone 4 versus iPhone 4S versus iPhone 5. Or maybe you saw AMD versus Intel for gaming performance. On a regular basis, I am constantly asked, how much RAM do you need when building a gaming computer? So that's exactly what we're going to find out on this edition of A Little Bite of Tech. <laughs> I started off by yanking out 12 gigabytes of my installed 16 gigs. I'm running four times four gigabyte sticks here. I recommend two times eight gigabyte if you're going 18 gigs of RAM. Just want to throw that out there. But right there we got four gigabytes of DDR1866 memory installed in my 8350 FX processor by AMD. And we are overclocking it to the 4.816 gigahertz that I did in my previous video. System idles using one gigabyte of RAM and I loaded up the brand new Valley Benchmark here by Unigen, which is a really cool synthetic benchmark. And we did the synthetic benchmark that way we can get consistent results when comparing the amount of RAM installed in your system. And the four gig results are in here. We've got an 1886 score, an average of 45.1 FPS, and a max of 86 with a minimum of 23. And the PhysX score on the 3D Mark 11 is capping out right about 22.1 frames per second at four gigabytes of RAM. And for the combined test, it looks like we're capping out right about 27 frames per second, giving us a 3D Mark score of 10,004 and a combined score of 6884. And RAM usage overall in the system never exceeded two gigabytes of RAM whatsoever. That's including all these tests. So I immediately threw in another stick of RAM, bringing us to eight gigabytes. And as you can see here, the system is idling a little bit over 1.3 gigabytes. And I reloaded up our Unigen benchmark here. And as you can see, while the benchmark is running, we are up to about 1.92 gigabytes of usage. But I think the most noticeable improvement right off the bat is the physics frames per second. We gained four frames per second. And the combined score, we're jumping all the way up to 30 frames per second. That is a huge increase, but remember, this is CPU usage, which directly uses the RAM, but we gained over 500 points on our 3D Mark 11 score and a combined score of 7785. And of course, last but not least, we installed the all four sticks of RAM, bringing us to 16 gigs of system memory, but we're only using a little over two gigabytes while running the Unigen benchmark at Ultra HD settings. But now we're hitting the point of diminishing returns because we've only gained one point on the benchmark. And most notably, our physics scores did not increase at all on either of the two tests in 3D Mark 11. In fact, our overall score in 3D Mark 11 went down by a couple of points, but that's just because we're in the margin of error of the actual test. So take that with a grain of salt. Now I hear you all saying, Jay, those are synthetic benchmarks, they don't matter. Well, here I am in 64 player map on Battlefield 3 maxed out settings. We're only using 3.67 gigabytes of system RAM. Now there's a few things that you can take away from this video right off the bat. One, four gigabytes is more than enough to play games. In fact, in the benchmarks you saw right there, there was no loss in frames per second at all in the real world environment. And when it came to the benchmarks, yeah, it gained a little bit, but mostly that was because of the fact that we were using physics on the CPU which directly uses the RAM. Who uses CPU physics these days? Nobody does. Graphics cards, if you have an NVIDIA, do all of the physics processing, and if you have AMD, well, you would need a second card anyway to do physics. You're not gonna throw it onto your processor. It honestly felt a little bit snappier under eight gigs than four gigs, but the difference was certainly minimal. It only shows in synthetic benchmarks. And as you saw in the real world test with Battlefield 3, we weren't even using four gigabytes of the RAM. So you can get away with eight gigabytes just fine if you're doing gaming. Now, all of that changes if you're doing rendering with your computer. Now, while rendering the intro of this video, it's only 23 seconds long, but you can see under four gigabytes of RAM, we maxed it out and it took one minute and 58 seconds to render. Under eight gigabytes, we used 6.51 gigs and it only took 40 seconds to render. That's a huge improvement. And under 16 gigs, we used seven gigabytes total while rendering and only 39 seconds to render. Now, once again, you saw a little bit of diminishing returns between eight gigs and 16 gigs on rendering. But keep in mind that that video was nothing more than an MOV format converted to an MP4. The more layers you add, the more transitions, sounds, sound effects, images, transparencies you add to your video, it's going to use a lot more RAM when you do the rendering. So there you have it guys, 4 versus 8 versus 16 gigs of RAM in your system for gaming and rendering, and you can see that 8 gigabytes is definitely a sweet spot. I still personally like 16 gigs, I just like to know I have the extra RAM in case I need it, but you can get away perfectly with 8 gigabytes of RAM. So what are you using and why? Put it down in the comments, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys in my next video.